we must build on resources presented by our young professionals and our nation's farmers without their involvement we couldn't succeed and with their involvement we cannot fail at yard prakari we feel that there couldn't be a very better opening to this session besides this Introducing quote by none other than none other than Indian milkman, Dr. Rakesh Kuryan sir. Greetings for the evening. We welcome you all at a webinar, Milk Press Discovery: What is Rightful Worth of Farmers' Milk? Organized by Yard Prakarya India Private Limited, co-organized by College of Dairy Science and Technology, Guru Angad Dev Patari, and Animal Sciences University, famously known as Gadwasu Lukhana. Our host for this insightful event is is a milk processing firm. from pali region of rajasthan milk station without taking much of your time i would like to introduce our speakers to the audience first of all we have dr indrapreet kaur she is an associate professor in department of dairy economics and business management at college of dairy science and technology gadwasu ludhiana uh, and export livestock economics dr kaur has authored multiple research papers on dairy farm economics in india and has played a fundamental role in devising milk pricing policy in punjab welcome dr kaur thanks a lot samran uh, then we have mr nirmal choudhary among us as procurement and processing expert mr nirmal choudhary is founder of milk station founded in 2017 milk station is an organization dedicated to bring premium quality dairy products to its consumers while working with the vision of developing western rajasthan as food processing hub milk station is our host for this today's event your gesture and support for hosting this event has helped us for doing what we love to do thanks mr choudhury presenting our nation's farmers we have mr deepak raj tushir among us as our progressive dairy farmer mr tushir is co-founder and ceo of winter farms an iit professional turned into patient uh, passionate farming entrepreneur committed to working for the vision of full of uplifting the base of pyramid farming community and stand to the transform transformation of farming for the better food safety and food security of the future generations and lastly i am simran deep singh student of college of veterinary science garwasu as the moderator of the session uh, i aim to Thanks, work simran. towards transforming livestock agriculture agriculture and lives of people involved in it by realizing my learnings into veterinary veterinary medicine Uh, dairy farm economics and farm sustainability. Jyot Prakari welcomes you all, and we are really thankful for you all, you all to join the session. Without taking any much uh, time, let us quickly drive into the discussion. Milk price discovery. To set, first of all, to set the base correct, I would like to ask Dr. Kaur, what is milk price? Milk price. What is the history and present day scenario of milk price discovery? Their merits, their demerits, and the all. important information around this which is a must know dr kaur please thanks a lot first of all prashant for giving me this opportunity to uh, speak on a very important topic price milk price discovery and its background and also the simran for organizing this webinar and sharing such an important topic which we have not touched i think since many many times so it is the most important i think in the current dairy scenario so i'll not be taking much time i just want to build one background about the milk uh, price discovery and how we should and i think we all know that what is the status of the india in the uh, dairy uh, overall scenario since 1919 uh, we are uh, contributing 63% of the milk production we are ranked number 1 and uh, if you see even india out of total 249 million households around 80 million households are engaged in milk production what i really want to say that when we talk about the dairy we we talk about the maximum population who is engaged in the dairy so whatever we are producing it is very important to give the right kind of the price to the farmers because that is our maximum population because even now the small holders are engaged in the dairy even after so many years of the different kinds of the development in dairy that has happened and over the years we have the cooperative systems in which we have 1.9 lakh dairy cooperative societies they are covered by different kinds of the members and all across the region 
So whatever we produce around 210 million ton, I'll, I'll just quickly touch why the pricing system is important. It, it roots through the two things. One is maximum 48% is retained by the producers and 52% is goes to the market. So whatever the pricing, whatever we are talking, going to talk about, it is about this 52%. So why this so much retention is there at home, that is not only for the nutritional security or family, that is also because of the pricing. Sometimes the producer don't get that kind of attractive prices that he goes to the market. So that is also the one of the major reason of higher retention at the household level. So our 52% is again divided between the organized and unorganized sector. So whatever the pricing system we have in the dairy that is determined by the organized sector. So whatever the price they have announced, the unorganized is gonna stay below that price. So it is, it is not anything, it is the business practice which is in India since ages. So the only 40 to 40% of the milk goes to the organized sector. In that, we also have the cooperatives and the private milk plant, which further goes maximum to the, uh, in cooperatives, the maximum to the liquid milk and the minimum to the uh, products. In the private, it is exactly the opposite. So whenever we talk about the pricing, we have to keep into the two, three things, the how the milk is traveling, what are the, our marketing channels through which it is traveling, how the uh, consumer is going to pay for it, how the producer is going to get about it. And even if our plants have to, we have to talk about their viability as well. Like, for example, in, it is an unsaid rule that whatever the cooperatives will announce, that the price of the private milk plant is also going to stay 10 rupees above or 10 rupees below. So if, if the plant is not viable, they will, not, they will also not be able to give back to the farmer. So, so it is a complex process of all these things together. Uh, the producer, the market, the channels in which the milk is traveling, your viability of your plant. So everything comes together for the milk pricing system. So how in India, briefly, I will touch how the milk, the pricing system evolved in India. Initially, it was just sold according to the weight, right? And it is mainly used for the ghee production, which is act as a major influencer. But when the cooperative societies in Gujarat has started, so what initially we just paid the price according to the fat. But what happened with that, that has only benefited the buffalo milk. So the states in which the cow population was more at that time, like Karnataka, Kerala, they couldn't get the benefit of the cow milk. So because we want to give the benefit to the cow farmer as well. So we have introduced this two excess pricing policy system, which first uh, came with the NDDB uh, 1970. So this, this system uh, this system was considered to give fair price of milk by evaluating fat and solid, not but fat, uh, that also. So in, in cow, we use two excess to give it a benefit to the cow farmer as well. So double excess system of milk pricing commonly followed in our milk market suggested by the milk pricing committee in 1972 because the cow farmers were not benefited with the single excess. The minimum SNF content desired for cow milk is fixed at 8.5% and 9% for buffalo. Even I must say we are today talking about the milk pricing system. Even these standards, which are ages old, like I can give you the example of Punjab. When I joined as in a, uh, because the, the dairy is a very new subject here. Now the dairy is not only a business. The dairy is not only the livelihood. The dairy is also a subject. When I joined as an, a livestock economist, the first thing I have seen, I must say here, that the standards of the fat and SNF for the cow milk was 3.5 and 8.5. And imagine that, as Deepak ji said, the Punjab is a very commercial state and we are four uh, ahead in the commercial dairy farming in which we have uh, the crossbred cows. So the standard was according to the our indigenous cows. So the commercial farmers were not even getting the benefit. So forget the pricing policy. We have not even changes those age old practices of those standards. So our, our department, Guru Angad Dev Veterinary and Animal Science University took an initiative and we did the survey and we said that right now the 3.2% fat should be the minimum fat on which the cow pricing should be based because our 85% population right now in Punjab is of crossbred cow, not the uh, indigenous cow. 
So that's how these systems uh, work. And according to two axes, then the uh, with the change in this formula, I am sure the lacks of the farmers in the Punjab has uh, given the value. But the uh, practice since 1972 has not changed. It is still based on the fat and SNF, and no other no other factor is being considered uh, while procuring the uh, uh, while procuring the milk. And for the plant, when they announce the fat rupees per kgs, they may mostly they uh, take care of the most of the supply. If the supply is more and the stock of the SMP they have. So they, they, that's how they uh, decide the price of the fat and SNF and sometimes it is a political pressure. But if you consider it in a logical way, so it has to be considered the so many factors before announcing the price because the viability of the economic farm is the very important thing for any pricing system to be happen. So uh, I think uh, we all here, audience, we are here for the discussion. So we all know two axis system for Buffalo, it is a kilo fat system and cattle, it is for the double axis system. So I'll not go much into the detail, assuming that we all have an, uh, uh, knowledge about this. So again, I'll come to that this with this kind of the pricing system in the background since 1972, our farmers are into the different kind of the marketing channels. They are directly selling, they are going to the cooperative, they are going to the private milk channel, they are going to the milk vendor and milk vendor to the others. The purpose of showing this data here is that, so if this pricing is on a benchmark, look at the profits which the farmer is obtaining. This is a three to four years old data. So even if we, the, on the basis of the data four years old, even if the farmer is giving on the basis of fat and SNF, he's not getting even one rupee from that pricing system. So that's why we need to rediscover the pricing system right now. And even if you're the private, it is even lesser than the cooperative because I told you that the cooperatives are the benchmark and for the milk vendor and consumer, it is also even the lesser. And if the more, more intermediaries are there, they go into the negative. Because of the poor farmers, they don't have the knowledge. The knowledge is here is which marketing channel to adopt. But before that knowledge, we as an, a policy makers and we as an, a, a people of the dairy from the different backgrounds, we need to understand that this pricing system, which is based on the 1972, is no longer a beneficial for the farmers. It has to adopt to the basis on the so many other things as well. Because of these marketing channels, like the different governments, the state governments, which they, they have to introduce different kinds of the incentive time to time. Why? Because the farmers are in distress. So you can see that Rajasthan has announced rupees five per liter. Uh, they are saying it, uh, Mukhya Mantri Dukdh Yojana. Jharkhand is uh, uh, giving rupees one per liter in addition to the milk procurement prices. Similarly, Karnataka is giving rupees five per liter. Sikkim has announced. So rather than announcing over and above these procurement prices to save the farmers, we have to relook this pricing system. Um, the purpose of showing this slide is that before the marketing channels and after that, it means time to time, different governments have to come into the some kind of subsidized, some kind of the incentive to the farmers to save the dairy farmers. And if you look at the globally, I think only uh, uh, the, nowhere in the uh, uh, prices are being determined on the basis of fat and SNF. They are determined on the basis this is a fat and protein. And in USA, other fat and uh, protein, they also do the different kinds of the survey. The most important survey I, I, I was looking at there, they also uh, see the alternative employment opportunities. So I must say here, whatever we are producing, for example, in a, in a Punjab, if the dairy is adopted by the farmer, he will, he will either buy the green fodder or he will shift his own land to the green fodder. It means he is... He is competing with the other crop, crops. So how can we forget the opportunity cost of that thing? So when we are determining the cost, we are determining the prices, we have to see the alternative employment opportunities as well. Because whatever the milk pricing system, the objective of that or the target of that milk pricing system is two things. The one is to increase the milk production. Second is to benefit the community, to benefit our producers. 
and the third thing is to provide the quality of the milk so so all this together we have to see the opportunity cost that if the farmer is diverting his land to the fodder production at least he should cover the cost of the milk production so these kind of the factors which uh, developed countries are taking into consideration we have to similarly israel they have the board which look into all the factors whatever the factor goes to produce the milk they look into those factors right it is it is not the only indicator but it is one of the important indicator that's the that's how the globally they look at the pricing system same is with the new zealand they have their software in which they calculate farm gate prices and the everything that the capital investment fixed cost depreciation so that at least they come up with the minimum price which supports the dairy farmers so in the in the with this kind of background there are the three reasons first if the dairy is a business for the quality of the milk we have to relook at the pricing system then we have also to see consumers willingness to pay for the milk and milk products and the economic viability of the dairy farms our pricing system should cover these three things only then the pricing system can evolve and if you just look at this slide this is the slide of last two years you can see the this feed and fodder cost is approximately 65% of the total cost of the production if if you are doing the dairy 65% of the cost is on the feed you can see 9% increase in the green fodder costing 36% increase in the dry fodder costing 23% increase in the concentrate costing so this is the this is the economic viability of the dairy farmer and parallelly at the same time if you see the milk fed prices they had just increased by the 7% so there is a huge gap that is a huge gap why there is a huge gap because there are the other factors which we consider and next thing is the viability i will not touch because uh, that is the another factor which is very important that the viability of the farm is important that's why the price discovery is important the other thing is consumers willingness to pay there is a consumer willingness to pay as we can see that this is the last survey done by nso that after that there is no survey there is a increase in the expenditure on milk and milk products and the urbanization is also increasing it means the second factor is already there consumers are willing to pay for a good quality of the milk the third thing is the quality of the milk fat and snf was uh, introduced at that time in 1972 when we are struggling with the milk we want from rural area to urban areas at that time to stop the uh, adulteration we used to say that that okay this is the two parameters on the basis of which we can see that less than these standards this is not in the category of the milk but after this so many years now it is a time to recognize the quality of the milk the other parameters of the milk until then we don't recognize that we will not be producing the right kind of the milk so that system has to enter into the pricing system only because that will give the encouragement to the farmers to produce better for the consumers so this is one of the uh, 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 diagram i have come across someone has really uh, done a good research that milk price is impacted by so many things and whatever the model we have to come out come now we have to discuss all these things we have to see our population our per capita income consumption our smp stocks our uh, our the allocative efficiency cost of production these all things come together and make the milk prices and the milk price should be viable for the farmer and not should be inflated for the consumer so we have to fix something in between and only then uh, we can think about the um, that how to uh, involve or uh, we need a, some kind of support from the government where we can have also a board where we can consider all these factors before announcing anything for the dairy farmers thank you very much very well and thoroughly put by dr kaur thanks a lot ma'am uh i request to audience to keep posting their questions in the question in the chat box we will try to raise maximum number uh, number of questions as much as the time permits uh now let us move to uh, move towards the few parts of our processing expert mr choudhury of milk uh, mix station what are your insights about impact of current price discovery model and policies uh, revolving around it uh, does it take account for consideration of seasonality production cost 
quality parameters, and coping the adaptations. What is your view, sir? Hello, everyone. Uh, right now, our view, uh, see, there, is no, there is no consideration from the government side or any cooperative about the seasonality or the production costs or mixed milk or anything quality premiums. Right now, the only consideration is taken into account is fat and SNF. Ma'am mm -hmm. knows that better. Uh, only fat and SNF is there. We don't take into account the whey, casein, or any protein content of the milk into account. Protein is very important part of the milk, which everyone takes care of in making their byproducts, VAPs, value-added products. But uh, no dairy or no cooperative or no government is taking this thing into account. So you're talking about that milk dis uh, milk pricing discovery. This is the this is very crucial. Discussion has to happen every time, yeah, every season and time being. But no one take the discussion into account because processors are going into losses and losses and losses due to price increase of the farmers. The uh, right now there was a five rupee subsidy by the government in Rajasthan, and the subsidy was only for cooperatives or only for RCBF cooperatives, not for everyone. There are MPCs registered in Rajasthan. There are many other FPOs registered in Rajasthan, but no one got the subsidy in the milk part. So that was a loss for processors also, because we had to pay five rupees extra to the farmer. And for us, the cost consideration is not there. We have to keep that profit and loss balance in between that. We have to pay extra the margin to our distributors. We have to give more money to the farmers to get, gain more milk from the farmers than Saras. These are the things no one takes into consideration. See, uh, man told that there are 20% private players in the market other than cooperatives. So this uh, private player will not increase until unless uh, government is also looking, uh, will also look into this matter. This is not going to increase. And on the other side, we see that the milk market in India is increasing every day. Like we are the largest producer. But there is no private player who is uh, on the top uh, five or six, uh, five or ten players. No private player is there. Why is that? IDF has taken three sponsors and all were cooperatives. So production cost. There are many things we look into account, transportation, commission, processing, fuel cost, salary, and this price. Then on that, we have to take into account subsidy also, which government is paying to the cooperatives, but we cannot pay. It. For us, that is a cost part, but for cooperative, that is not the cost part. They are getting it for grant. So for us, the milk price increases, like it shoots up. So how will we take care of our consumers? We are not able to take care of our consumer because our prices will be increasing day by day. Consumers will be thinking that private players are looting them. And it's not the scenario that private players are like looting them. See, our prices are too high actually. Our, our procurement prices are too high. So, uh, there is no like uh, committee or something like that who takes into account the seasonality of the procurement. There is no committee that takes into account that how the processor or production cost should be uh, done for cooperative and private players. It should be there. Like, uh, see, the current pricing policy is not dependent on the uh, species. Ma'am has told that uh, cow and buffalo we take into account like 3.5% fat, 8.5% SMS for cow and for buffalo. 6.5 something and 9 SNF. But what about the other milk animals? See, there are underserved, underserved societies like community, Traika community, then there are Rebari community who, who are grazing goats and camels in Rajasthan, in Gujarat, in MP. So they are mixing their milk into buffalo milk to get the good price of their milk. But what is happening there? We are degrading the quality of the milk with that. 
no one is taking into consideration these things and these are the underserved community with communities which government should help but they are not helping them they are just looting their votes from the people by helping farmer giving them uh, subsidy and all the things there is no transparency in the government side or cooperative side there is no transparency in the uh, rate fixation also no cooperative takes a, a big player or a private player into the committee to decide the rates there are there are many forums of dairy in india but no cooperatives there is no agency who is involving private players also in the forum to have their view how to decide the rates the uh, cooperatives are not taking into account other things also they just want because every cooperative have elections and uh, these cooperatives also want to become uh, this chairman or director or something so they increase the rate every day see the government is giving subsidy of 5 rupees other than that pali saras like we are we are from pali actually so pali saras is giving 3 rupees subsidy above that and who is taking consideration of these things they in call they are allowed to do that or not see and then now the subsidy has become 8 rupees so how will the private player like us who is very small who is not even like a, a big private dairy ananda or gyan or something like that they will survive or not for us the cost has increases by 8 rupees and we can't even sell the product 1 rupee above saras see no one will take our product because saras is a brand a new player a small medium and micro enterprises they are not even able to survive the market this this field has become a this field has become a entrant for a big player or who wants to do some white and black only for that this is there <laughs> see many many players are doing this only many tobacco players are entering the market many uh, big uh, who are doing cash business are entering the market we all know that what is happening there right? so these private players will never look into the benefit of farmer they are just entering the market to make money they are not the players who will uh, help the farmer so this is the view government show to the farmer that these these are the players they will not help you government should also work with a private player who are working with good efficiency in the market who are working for the farmers who are making the market traceable transferable who are sourcing their, like collecting their milk in ethical way they are not helping them government should associate with that uh, private dairies also Okay, if you if uh, we are giving the subsidy to a cooperative, then these are the private players we have chosen. They will also get. Or else, you should not give subsidy to any of the farmer. Simple as that. They should not give subsidy to any of the farmer. It is as simple as that. By saying this, हम मतलब as private player हम खराब बन जाते हैं because the perception is made in the market that we don't want. Uh, the farmer to be subsidized we don't want their income to be increased and i uh, see in rajasthan when this uh, notice was issued that the government will give 5 rupees of subsidy no private player asked a question against this government that why you have given this subsidy in at, at this time because next year is election so no one had asked this uh, agency uh, government agency why you have increased uh, the subsidy and because everyone knew if anyone asked the question a raid will come to their dairy and see there are many things a uh, uh, private dairy does not maintain there are many things no one maintain, no one can maintain everything in their dairy so a fear of shutdown is there a fear of shutdown is always there for a private dairy so wo bas he always try to survive there he never try to work for a, a profitability he never tries to work for the uh, what you can say uh, benefit of the farmer he always try to make the my uh, try to make more profit out of it because he knows that there is nothing he can do thanks so for your See, uh, uh, yes you have raised very pressing issues and we appreciate that sure sure, sure. no no uh, i will move on the on another question actually uh, we wanted to 
enter this thing into the uh, like scenario or for the pricing thing that there should be uh, the government who has a, a big population of uh, milking cattle like camel or goat or anything like that government should announce a rate for that also there is no camel rate in the in the market there is no rate for goat milk in the market from the cooperative side the, the government should work for them see in rajasthan the camel population has decreased from 5 crore to 2.5 crore that's a that's a drastic number like that's a huge number half of their population why because government are not allowing them to herd here and there government is not allowing to uh, procure their milk and on that see most of the camel goes for butcher to other countries but that's also not allowed so agar ye sab allow nahi karega to how will that person like uh, will get his income from so they should they should give the uh, these these underserved community uh, a incentive on that the subsidy should be given to these people these underserved community not to a farmer whose primary income is milk see before 1965 or before white revolution uh, mm-hmm. the primary source of income for a farmer was agriculture the milk was not the income source milk was a secondary income source for uh, which he was using as a nutritional values for his home or basic food ghee dood dahi etc but after this white revolution milk has become a commercial platform dairies have become a commercial or platform to, to gain to profit out of it due to time constraint yes, we have to move to the other yeah, yeah sure sure so we want that the government should take into consideration these these other communities and these other milch animals also on the policy part these these considerations should be there that we should involve private players also and this government incentive is i guess this is not a matlab this is not the solution incentive is never a solution subsidy freebies are never a solution uh, if if the time is constant is there i guess we should move on to mr deepak sir Uh, thank you for the, thanks thanks of thanks a lot for your insights sir they are very valuable for the session uh, now coming towards next segment of the session i would like to ask mr tushir of pinsar farms our progressive farmer that what are your views about current day milk pricing discovery does this align with the production cost of uh, production cost of the milk please start with enlisting the different categories of cost incurred while production of the milk mr tushir please thanks anandeep uh, for the session and uh, prashant for you know highlighting this uh, really important topic for the industry and uh, dairy farmers and uh, indrapreet ji has really nailed down all the important points you know uh, for the background of uh, dairy farming and uh, i heard nirmal also you know uh, for the processing industry and i agree with all those points you know all those pain points so regarding the uh, the incurred cost in dairy uh, farming i see you know dairy as a leaky bucket there is always something leaky in, in dairy farming and uh, we need to see what uh, what uh, which hole is getting big so that's always a problem for for the dairy farmers and uh, so the, just and everybody knows the, about the uh, top 5 7 costs like uh, ji said you know uh feed is the you know most uh, you know costliest thing on the farm that contributes our concentrate uh, that is around 40 to 50% and our fodder part that that is 22 uh, 30% so uh, this, this comprises around 70% cost of the you know uh, total expenses we have next we have uh, the human resource cost that comes at third number uh that uh, around 10 to 15 uh, percent of the total cost and then we have other utility cost like electricity fuel and then we have uh, veterinary uh, costs and the uh, breeding costs so uh, all these and and uh, looking at the uh, 70% cost that becomes you know uh, very important as part of the economic uh, thing of dairy farming that how much feed conversion rate you know we are uh, getting uh, from our animals so uh, because if we control that if we control even 5% of that you know uh, and we all know there is not much 
margin into you know uh, dairy farming and on the other side also so it's it's a very thin uh, margin industry and as uh, uh, nirmal was saying that there is a lot of mal practices being followed in the industry that's how a lot of players get survived if we if you go to you know, straight with the you know fair uh, cost it's very very hard to you know uh, survive and sustain with the you know uh, current inflation uh, things so uh, those are the major uh, cost that we see uh, in routine so as a pixel farm we have moved from very traditional small farm to a very large organized farm so how you have seen the uh, trend of the cost the production of uh, the cost of production for the 1 liter of milk how you have seen that it rises dips and as you go bigger and bigger of the organization what's your your feeling on that <laughs> Yes, so there has been a drastic change, you know, when we started in 2011, and uh, at that time we have we have factored three plans. One was the normal plan, one was the green plan, and one was the red plan. And we thought that we somewhere uh, at least if we go to the red plan, still we'll be able to survive. But when we you know uh, executed our uh, project and we were into like uh, second third year. Uh, our red plan also goes below uh, the projections because uh, when we see in last uh, 10 years or 11 years the feed cost at the time concentrate cost at the time we we had factor it was like 13 14 rupees and now it is close to 40 rupees so we can see there is a three times hike in the 50% cost uh, of the total expense so and apart from other like fuel cost and the fodder cost uh, as indrakit ji has highlighted just in last one or two year there has been high inflation so and if you look at uh, the uh, pricing of market that has not even doubled so uh, there is there has been lot of gap in input price increase and the output uh, price uh, towards the market even uh, the you know uh, nirmal was highlighting that all these cooperative you know they they keep this uh, situation pressing and they get the government funds and they don't increase much price in 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 the, in the market and there is a that's why it creates a lot of disbalance uh, in the whole situation so in terms of uh, you know uh, cost uh, expenses uh, i would say uh, some of the expenses have got tripled Uh, do the margins diluted over the period just as you grow, or they keep on changing? What's the trend? Keep as a small farmer, you had a bigger margin, or as a medium farmer, you have a bigger margin. As an organized farmer, you have a uh, benefit of cost of economies, uh, scale of uh, scale of economies, and like that. So please, I think at uh, in the current scenario, nobody is enjoying any type of uh, you know whether it is small. or whether it is medium or whether it is large scale because the high infla- high inflation rate is impacting everyone you know uh, there and there are different challenges at you know all kind of farming if it is uh, subsistence farming uh, there are some expenses that a farm uh, farming family can bear like they don't count uh, their own family uh, time so that's how you know some of the work uh, that they can manage and they don't hire supervisors or permanent vets as we do in you know uh, large commercial farms and uh, there are a lot of formalities around when we move to you know a, a good structured farm uh, like we are paying gst uh, on all the items whether it is machinery parts spare parts and uh, whether it is veterinary medicines a lot of uh, things that we you know uh, keep formalizing in our uh, scenario to keep it as a structured commercial farming and gst i would also highlight is a major part that government has forgotten you know uh, and it is impacting knowingly unknowingly to a lot of farmers they are paying in background and there is no output gst on milk but we are paying as a input gst on milk so that's again a big gap that government see and government don't consider as a you know dairy uh, proper dairy industry as we know so, they are uh, very different yeah as we know they, they are very different sets of farms farm types available in india there are some small large and medium farms depending upon their management uh, management styles and different sort of inputs they use so what is right. the ideal picture of a farm government or policy maker should use to 
make the price discovery model or formula what is the ideal picture of the farm it's a small farm it's a large farm it's a medium farm what is the ideal picture uh, i think looking at the current picture a uh, lot of small farms are getting closed or as we have seen transition in lot of uh, countries you know small farming getting to the medium farms medium farms getting to the larger farms but here transition is very very slow due to the uh, government policies and a uh, lot of uh, unsupportive things uh, so here i will i will see like 20 to 50 cows farm uh, be a ideal scenario that you know uh, that is uh, we can see a dedicated uh, kind of farming or it will uh, you know again move to 50 to 100 so uh, i would say 50 is a you know uh, a uh, normal size that we see in uh, punjab also that we should consider uh, as a com- commercial dairy farm with having all those you know good practices in hand with all the uh, chiller in hand so to maintain the milk quality uh, and and uh, having all the international uh, best practices like uh, no you you know uh, withdrawal period of antibiotics aflatoxins uh, control so all those practices should be enrolled while you know having an ideal farm thanks a lot for insightful review uh, sir now we would like to move to our last and most important segment for this session which is a round table discussion in form uh, which is in round table discussion format where we would like to discuss about the policy what has been done and should be done to value farmers milk more appropriately and improve the milk uh, improve the milk price let's start with dr kaur uh, are you here yeah so yeah, at yeah. the policy uh, uh, so how you are seeing in the today's time or hoping for to see in the near future what uh, what is your take on the relevance and suitability of current price uh, discovery systems and at what factors policy makers are keeping a quite a, quite a keen eye what are the changes in pricing discovery uh, price discovery models you are expecting to occur in the near future for the betterment of uh, consumer farmer and all the stakeholders involved in the industry uh, thank you simran and uh, thanks nirmal ji and deepak ji for a wonderful thoughts sharing so i'll just just give the my opinion based on both of you talks so uh, nirmal ji has uh, rightly said that sometimes they say that the private players are looting and they are not able to even charge 1 rupee extra and when the cost has increased by the 8 rupees right so nirmal ji i have initially said that that it is not an a rule but the cooperative has become an a unsaid benchmark that we have to recognize that it has become an a benchmark for anything forget the subsidies and forget the other thing it has become the benchmark so anything you have to move around the private players have to move around the that's why i always say that we have to lobby together whatever the pricing system we have to if we have to evolve that has to come through the policy makers and the dairy <clears throat> business people whether they are in the cooperatives or whether they are in the private business players because we all here to do the business right so that that is the one one thing which we need to do and the second thing simran i think uh, we have to realize the fact that anything which is arbitrary i don't consider this pricing system based on any logic sometimes as nirmal ji said it is an election sometimes a pressure from the association and we say it's a license raj that we are still going to <laughs> i am i am an <laughs> academician i'll stick to my words so nirmal ji you have an all the opportunity to say whatever you want to say yeah, sure, but sure, i sure. i i i must say i i i'm just saying that whatever like whatever the whatever is beyond the understanding of any scientific logic so i i don't consider this pricing system based on anything i i really recommend that we should have some board or we should have some organization or we should have something which should which the policy makers the businessmen the farmers they all should part of it and design a uh, pricing system which is not only sustainable for the producer or a processor but also for the consumer which ultimately is going to buy sometimes we don't recognize that we say that india is a very big market but some consumers are just on the edge for example if the milk is 60 rupees a liter um, some somebody may be just buying it for the tea 
right we don't have in a that kind of we are we are mixed population with the middle class and the lower and you just do it 61 and that that uh, that consumer exits the market right so we have to recognize those facts as well matlab that is a very important factor the second factor which deepak raj ji has said that shutting down of the dairy farms that is the again one of the most important thing and we have an a controversial statements here on the one side from the agriculture we are promoting it as an allied business in which we see the farmers can have the more income on the other side due to the higher cost of milk production the farms are struggling with the shutting down and there is an exit from the business and when the country is also struggling with the less non farm opportunities so again i said we have to consider all the opportunity cost before deciding for any kind of the pricing system and thirdly i also want to say that that seasonality seasonality of the milk and the procurement of the milk which has to match it is the one of the biggest thing that that's why we go for the smp stocks and we have all those things so there are multiple factors uh, which need to consider uh, before uh, we announce the price and the, obviously the fourth one is the cost of milk production and the lastly the quality of the milk nirmal ji i again want to address you have said that the how how this pricing system is not addressing the quality of the milk we are just saying the fat and snf and if we are we are not even bothered about the species wise milk we are just concentrating because the cooperatives are concentrating on the mixed milk at that time we have no we have the obligation to to give the milk to everyone at that time but the time has changed now the consumer has changed it has now the species wise procurement species wise pricing it has to be give the importance otherwise we will lag behind this dairy business which has uh, i must say it is self driven till now but now we have to do something so i think the house is open for the discussion thanks a lot uh, mr tushif would you like to add something to it <laughs> uh yes uh, there are uh, two three po points that we you know keep uh, troubling the industry first thing as everybody has highlighted you know the adulteration if we keep you know it, uh, you know if we have a uh, hard bang on the adulteration thing that will at least you know 30 40% uh, clear the whole picture how yeah. the you know the fair industry practices are there second I thing as uh, has highlighted that you know uh, if we Uh, go towards the milk quality thing that we have to keep our benchmarks high, uh, whether we are uh, dairy farmers or whether we are dairy processors. We have to keep our benchmarking aligned with the uh, you know world dairy industry. We cannot you know uh, keep sailing our boat into a different directions. That we have to align whether it is uh, you know uh, pricing or our quality factors. If you see, we are not even able to export. even i would say uh, 1% of the total milk production so that you know uh, i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm just interrupting and you know that the most common common adulterant is water also as well so so yes. just just like just to keep the fat and uh, snf percentages and those are our benchmarks so the most common yeah. is water because the kind of the costing yes. we have even the large farmer is not viable Yes, yes, you are you are very right, and we see nobody uh, you know uh, test for adulteration as a water. You now yeah. they take it as default that water can be as a default adulterant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just uh, see the fat, and we don't, uh, we don't care about whether the milk, the procuring yeah. by the private or the cooperatives, they have the water yeah. or not. so we don't keep any yes. dog check on that quality parameter. So it is a serious issue in which they have to enter into the price discovery. pricing policy yeah it's a very yeah, it's a very small thing but if you see uh, even uh, not the academic institutions or uh, not the uh, biggest players they are not having cryoscope which I can actually tell how much percentage water is yeah, there in, yeah. in, in we don't have milk. any mechanism so for that that's a very small factor yeah, yeah and, and we specially uh, got it uh, from new zealand and that uh, you know specifically tells 0.01 it tells that how, how much water is there in the milk so uh, that indicates that we should have a national uh, laboratories that can uh, independently test uh, all the milk you know uh, routing through uh, whether uh, you know uh, right channels or wrong channels so that indicates you know uh, a central 
national uh, uh, lab that can you know uh, quality control all these things yes yes thanks uh, yeah. one question for nirmal choudhary sir it's from audience milk cows to will affect livestock rearing and farmers interest please justify it sorry i could not get it what it is uh, milk cost will affect livestock rearing and the farming and in, uh, farmers interest please uh, can you please elaborate on it yes there is a directly direct correlation in all the you know subject is around that if, uh, if we are getting a baseline cost a fair cost of uh, looking at the all uh, inflation in input cost that can fairly substitute uh, the milk price cost and uh, you know the dairy farming can be viable uh, based on that and that as i said earlier it has to be a balanced approach uh, towards the uh, input milk uh, price and towards the output milk price so uh, it's not like that uh, cooperatives keep getting the funds from government and they keep uh, in the price low towards the market there has to be a balance uh, around around it and uh, and i would say you know the solution is not just to increase the prices uh, industry just like farmers are working towards the industry in the same way industry has to work with the farmers to help them to support them and to give a Uh, ecosystem and i see uh, that perfectly in new zealand and other developed countries there have there is a proper you know technical people that are supported to farmers there is knowledge centers and everything is there to keep uh, you know uh, the farmers uh, controlling their cost so there has to be you know uh, resource center uh, mechanism from the dairy industry also so going to the next uh, a question for uh, nirmal chaudhary sir how is current pricing affecting the farmer and the milk uh, milk uh, milk pool uh, is the next generation ready to take the farming up as profession <laughs> see uh, the current pricings are not good for the farms also see uh, when i started this uh, processing plant na i was going for the dairy farm only and like very modern dairy farm like 50 50000 initially and binser farm was a ideal model for us <laughs> so we studied your case also and yeah but sir you can all you also know that many many students have visited you but out of 100 only one will open the farm yes yes you have very managed very very beautifully but it's very hard to manage a farm at a commercial level so what i what i thought was that farming is not a easy thing i'll go in the technical part i'll process the milk i'll help the farmers to maintain their farm i'll help them to get know how technology how to improve their uh, profit out of it so we we are doing that see mostly we are associated with mpcs or sgs we are associated with self help groups we help them to increase their profit from milk actually uh like many people think that cooperatives are giving them good margin in the mill but they are not they, but farmer is associated with the cooperative for the subsidy part they are not associated with them for the milk price uh, uh, so what is young like economic, young generation uh, yes uh, whatever i look like to ask that uh, according to the present situation will the next generation the future generation will be yes. willing to get the dairy or not uh, i am coming on that only so next generation is also seeing this subsidy as a benefit part see when i started this processing plant also many people come and ask me acha subsidy kitna mila plant par plant to free ho gaya hoga same thing happens with farm also the young young generation is coming to the farming profession for the subsidy only they will sell their milk to the cooperative or they will uh, get the subsidy on the farm equipments because government is giving bmc subsidy and all the things so no one wants to improve the milk quality in the market no no younger generation is coming to the market to like disrupt the market for the milk part you know everyone wants to get money out of it if you if the if the country or if the government if the cooperative want younger generation to come into the market they have to market, they have to make the market stable first they have to 
get removed of this license raj they have to make the pricing structure so transparent that anyone in the village can know that how is he getting the price at this range see they are increasing the procurement price so what is the business what does the business say next day mrp should also increase next day selling price should also increase so for months and months they don't increase the selling price for a farm also like sir has deepak sir has farm if they are selling the milk with 30 rupees extra next day on a liter will the consumer buy it sir or if you increase no, 10 rupees no, if, no, the, no, if you increase no, 10 no. rupees one lo ha huh, obviously so what happened in rajasthan was 5 rupees were increased with subsidy of rajasthan 3 rupees the local cooperative increased and then like uh, 8 to 10 rupees no one will going to pay extra next day if you ask a consumer that uh, 10 rupees extra de do because prices bad gaya he will laugh at you he will think that aisa thodi hota hai so wahan pe kya hota hai private what happens there is they think private is looting so private has not done anything everything depends on the supply demand and pricing yes see procurement ke sath next day he and no one i am not saying that cost badhni chahiye i am not saying that cost should increase we uh, the, this is the role of this is the job of agency to maintain that how to ma- how to maintain this procurement prices the field cost has increased so high in in the history it has not increased so much like roof top hai abhi hai na so yes. obviously procurement price has to increase everyone knows that and on that lumpy has affected this northern western part of india so everyone knew that the prices are going to increase so uh, in si- last 6 months i am talking about the date of rajasthan only in last 6 months the prices here has increased by 13 rupees and i am not talking about the subsidy yet i am only talking about the milk part 13 rupees the prices have increased per liter of milk and you can check the data again that only 3 rupees liter the selling price has increased Yes. So how yes. do you think yes. that yes. the private dairy will survive? So they, what what they will do is they will cut the fat in the pouch. They will cut the fat in the pouch. They will cut the S N F in the pouch. <laughs> This is going on. And what they will do? They will not sell the full cream milk. So look, when this uh, cooperative thing is started, now the India wanted that. क्वांटिटी इंक्रीज हो बिकॉज एसेंशियल था कि मिल्क हर घर में पहुंचे इट वॉज एसेंशियल दैट मिल्क शुड रीच एवरी होम एंड मिड डे मील्स एट एवरी फूड सेंटर्स बट वी आर नॉट लिविंग इन दैट इंडिया अगेन लाइक एनी मोर नाउ दिमांडिटी इज इंटरेस्टेड इन सेलिंग मिल्क we are not interested that's the thing we are interested in value added products because they cannot judge our product value from the milk price yeah so we should keep the quality not the quantity again that's why we talk about the species based yeah origin based milk pricing okay. see camel has very good nutritional value it is the job of the government to educate them you should drink camel milk also if you are educated you drink camel milk if you are if you have uh, disease or you have diabetes or something you should go for goat milk we have decreased all the nutritional value of this goat milk camel milk no one is taking care of these things it is the job of the government to make the market sustainable and not on the price dependent thing i guess the time will be short you, yeah. if anyone else has to say something thanks for yes. thanks for your points sir uh one question for uh, from the audience for dr Kul, uh, dr kaur uh ma'am are you there yeah yeah i am there why price of milk is same in india uh, uh than in france with absence of proper technology and standards where are the margins i didn't get it what what if they are why prices of uh, milk are same in india and france where uh, where is the uh, technology and the standards are absent in uh, proper technology and proper standards are absent in uh, markets of india where are the margins there should be some margins and where are they going if not into technology and the quality part where are they are going so the margins to the indian farmers you are saying that 
I, actually, I'm not able to comprehend uh, the margin that. between the farm gate price and the consumer price. Yeah. So where these margins are going, right? So uh, first, we have to under. Uh, I think the Nirmal has already answered that the what the procurement prices and the how the different kind of the cooperatives and the private plants are working, right? So with the cooperatives in my second slide, I have clearly said that they are mostly into the liquid milk. So we, with, the, with the social responsibility to provide the milk to everyone. So their margins are already low and we have discussed enough that they are surviving on the different kinds of the subsidies from the government, right? So the margins are going nowhere. With the private players right now, we do have the margins because they are into the product making, right? So, but there is a, again a question that those margins are going in the beginning, as we said that with the processing industry, right? So those margins are going back to the farmers or not. That is the biggest question because there is a no, no much difference in the consumer prices, no much difference in the procurement prices. So we can see that, that the margins are in between the systems. So that is the something we really need to look for those. But, but again, I must say that it is in a business. There is one peculiar thing about uh, Indian markets that there are uh, un un uh, unorganized market placement there. What's the uh, role of unorganized segment in the uh, defining the liquid milk pricing and then influence into the price at the times of seasonality and market fluctuations? How unorganized market is controlling the prices if they are controlling? Uh, unorganized market is a very big uh, market for the liquid milk price, uh, I must say. But then I must say that the why why the farmer is choosing the unorganized market that is the something we have to look for and uh, the biggest reason was the credit right so the advance payments which we get in the, those kind of the setups which we don't get in the organized sector so that's why their pricing strategy that that, that, that milk goes to the cities and that then they may sell at a very high price as compared to the prices which the other players are getting right so they are collecting it from the farmer. The farmer prices are lower because of the uh, non-institutional credit involved in the unorganized sector. But on the other hand, the consumers are not going to get any benefit with the unorganized sector being existent with the org organized sector. Yeah, I think the, the light has gone, so I don't know how long I'll be able to survive. <laughs> uh, coming to the next part. Uh, is the international market uh, international market rates are influencing the uh, national market rates or the S, uh, fat rates SNF, SNF rates over in the national markets and the regional markets of the milk procurement rates right are the international uh, international rates uh, influencing that or any other inf uh, international policy that india signs on like uh, paris agreement or any sustainability agreement or in, in sub sorts does that uh, affect policy uh, and the milk price discovery as of now or not Obviously, obviously they will affect the uh, the uh, the biggest is the seasonality of the procurement and that's why we are converting the lot of the milk into the SMP and SMP cost and SMPs and the if we enter into the, any kind of the agreement their uh, their powder coming to the India and influencing the market obviously obviously the costings and the other structures are very different so they are they are they are they are the biggest uh, uh, things which are going to play the role in the uh, dairy business. Uh, as you put that, uh, this price, uh, this international market interaction will put uh, some sort of uh, uh, some sort of uh, influence to the national markets. Now, a big, a big question for the TIPAC, sir: How are your consumers react, uh, reacting to the high uh, high milk prices? How the consumers reacting to the high milk prices? Are they willing to pay uh, premiums for the quality, better milk, or that knowing the traceability or something? Is there a market for a better suited that? They know their milk. Uh, yes, Sivandeep, uh, there are very limited number of customers. You know, everybody for milk, you know, it's a staple food, uh, you know, for thousand of years for India. And they understand that uh, the milk, uh, it was produced earlier, it is same as of today. So the education part is very, very less towards the customer. What are the quality standards? Not even, uh, you know, uh, these cooperatives, they tell uh, what are the these the standards just uh, because everything is based on fat and SNF. 
so yes but you know looking at the awareness of the customers everybody is reading on the internet and you know uh, uh, they are aware what is going on uh, so uh, very limited customers they appreciate the quality uh, but i would say you know quality is a is a you know uh, well accepted thing that everybody has to get and that's uh, where i i have highlighted that if we get a tap on the adulteration you know all uh, all the dairy platform will come to a you know good uh, clear picture you know uh, so uh, yes the customers are there and they uh, pay premium but there is a limit to that you know we can't go you know increase keep increasing the pricing and the customer will uh, can't keep paying unless and until they understand what is the real quality and you know industry make them aware that what is uh, quality milk so everybody has to work towards you know milk quality now uh, i would like to ask a single question to every one of you how a level playing field for the dairy sector looks like what are your inputs on that starting with uh, choudhury sir Uh, so please Sorry, what was the question how <clears throat> level playing field looks uh, looks for the in the dairy sector how level playing field looks like level playing you mean uh, like with other players so and all every uh, cooperatives private firms uh, uh, beneficial so for the other players beneficial like, for the farmers uh, how it will what are the uh, factors uh, those will be considered to make us uh, feel playing that uh, this is this is the factors and Let's try to uh, enlist it. Enlist it. Factors. Most of the factors are very common. Like good rates should be there, quality should be there, and it must be ensured that farmer should also get the good price. See, uh, many people will be there will not be happy happy if they know that uh, they are getting the milk by cutting the throat of the farmer. Yeah, this is also the scenario. If they get to know that farmers the suicide होरा है, फिर भी वो दूध बना रहे हैं. and that we milk we are drinking every day they will not be happy about that so this is all the case they they want that farmer sh- uh, farmer should get a good price they want that they should get a quality milk and also at a good rate hey, india has sir we are we are in a country where our premium is also middle class see we for us innova is premium mercedes is not So we live in that kind of India. You will not see a question in many countries that you want a quality product with a good price. This is the question, or sir, in survey uh, you will get in India. These are the questions you get in India, like quality with good price. So the thing is that uh, level playing to hey, nee na. you cannot play against amul you cannot play against rcd if you cannot play against varka they are the like price setter they are the they are the policy players they are the policy makers and you cannot go against the policy makers see they have decided that they are the authority we have chosen that constitution is our authority and we do everything according to our constitution in the milk market these cooperatives has the same mindset that they are the authority the market will go where they will push it so there is no level playing in the milk market okay. coming to mr tushir how can we make farmers uh, from price takers to price givers or price offers how can we we make farmers to offer the price for what they are producing and not the, taking the price what uh, they are getting into the market yes that's a you know a very desired situation and every farmer wants that that you know i should get uh, the milk price with my you know uh, as per my input price but uh, suddenly you know the, that getting that situation is uh, very very difficult and as i you know uh, read in the comments and until analysis uh, the farmers are not seen as vote banks as ashok ji has said so uh, that situation is uh, very difficult and uh, we need more and more young farmers uh, and that's also a very difficult situation uh, our young generation is 
preferring towards the jobs and the you know going to urban uh, areas so who will do the farming so that's uh, again a you know big question to you know normalize that situation that farmer get their own price so i think uh, uh, the whole uh, dairy farming industry has to like uh, uh, in the pg has said that we should have a board that you know all these pain points can be put up there work with government and there has to be a strong policy around uh, dairy farming and dairy processing industry so both goes hand in hand and gives a good quality product uh, to the consumer so that uh, needs you know more uh, precise uh, uh, community forming and uh, the board forming towards the dairy industry policies or we keep or we keep like doing agitation uh, like we do in uh, punjab and other areas uh, but that's not a you know uh, uh, permanent solution so uh, at last if the government does not listen you know the agitation is the uh, last uh, thing that uh, farmer do so now concluding this part of the session i would like to say that anorex market organized market and direct to consumer markets are interacting with each other at a very different uh, different angles and very different influencing parameters the credit the penetration of uh, procurement the consumer confidence and the financial status of uh, who is procuring the milk right is is uh, giving a very big influ influence on, on how milk will be priced what price the farmer will get so now academia producers processors and policy viewpoints are discussed along with the factors uh, considered while devising pricing methodologies and their interaction now i would like to invite dr sk mendi ratta dean college of dairy science technology garwasu to do the honor and deliver the concluding remarks for the session uh, is dr mendi ratta along us uh simran i don't think he is there okay uh, so i would like to uh, well, i would like to request uh, mr tripathi to come and deliver the concluding remarks please um hi simradeep and um, firstly i would like to thank all our panelists uh, i think like this is the first thing that i should do uh, i would specifically like to thank uh, dr kaur tushir ji uh, nirmal ji because i have been part of multiple discussions but this has been one of the most flat ones one of the most vocal ones and we have actually picked up the topic that was that is very difficult to maneuver it it is very technical it is very sensitive it, and it also ha also has a lot of emotions and i am really happy that like nirmal ji was able to share his emotion he was able to channelize all the energy that he has and specifically like that makes me extremely happy about this i am very much confident that our audience would find it very interesting and very valuable as well and what i also think like we have just touched the tip of the iceberg because uh, from dr kaur's presentation we saw that it is so diverse and we need to do much more than what we are doing as of now it's, it's just not just the discussion but actually doing we should also have a transparency of what prices are actually this is one one of the things that we need to actually work upon to start with one thing yeah the uh, in in this whole pricing scenario na i forgot to say one thing that productivity has a very big role yes see a government has never focused on that thing productivity mm -hmm. yield is and in india's yield is very low yeah India's yield is very low. Mm -hmm. So, uh, अगर फार्मर को प्राइस देना है तो उसका प्रोडक्टिविटी बढ़ा दो प्राइस तो ऐसे ही बढ़ जाएगा बिल्कुल so hello uh, then again like uh, there are so many things to be said i think like this is as i said we have just touched the tip of the iceberg we need to come back over and over and over again like um, and so that like we can actually dig deeper into the topic and i think like this is where we like okay with the same panel i think we should be able to come back let's say in two months three months to see like how much progress that we have made uh in the understanding and like also liking making some uh recommendations to the our local departments or to the governments uh, with this i would actually like to thank uh, everyone of you uh, all the panelists similarly thanks a lot for moderating this excellent session and i would also like to thank our audience because we have definitely over uh, like we have like taken much more of their time uh thank you everyone thanks the audience and uh, 
looking forward to coming back to you guys very soon. Uh, we will also do a summary paper of all the discussions that have been made. Um, it would be sent uh, to the um, speakers first for their approval. Once they approve it, then it will be shared with the audience. Thanks a lot, everyone. One, one question for four, ma'am. Uh, one for yeah. uh, one for the yeah, doctor sir. Mm -hmm. You have you have to suggestion de sakte hai na ke that there should be a committee at the state level, cooperative, then with MPCs, private players, and rate experts. I, I, experts. I am I am interrupting you. Uh, committee, farmer committee. No, no, I am interrupting you. Committee banana chahiye. Who decides the price? Uh, just wait a minute. I am I am interrupting you, Nirmal. In between, I am very passionate about this work. You know, when I started in two thousand eight, we had the project in which we are going to calculate the cost of milk production. With the kind of results we got, we stopped the we stopped the funding by two thousand fifteen. And it is only my dream uh, that one day, one yes. day, I would be able to convince. So wherever I go, I I just talk with same kind of passion that we need I, one board, we need committee. I studied your work also, ma'am. Yeah. I studied your work after Simran told me that you will be the you will be on the panel. See, I am telling you, one 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 committee is not in whole India. No, one one committee is not in India. And state wise, at least, should be because state is ah, uh, bilkul, mostly bilkul. cooperatives are state wise. But state yeah. wise, a committee. And I am telling you, district level should be there because most of the cooperatives are working at the district level only. स्टेट लेवल पे ही नहीं है तो डिस्ट्रिक्ट तो बहुत दूर की बात है आई जस्ट लव इट वी नीड वी नीड मोर वी नीड मोर इन द प्रीजी इन इन ईच यूनिवर्सिटीज टू हैव दिस कमेटीज एंड हैव दिस सेशन वी वी नीड मोर मोर पीपल हु कैन सिट ऑन ड्राइविंग सीट जब तक सिचुएशन सबके लिए विन-विन नहीं होगी ना कितना भी मिल प्रोडक्शन बढ़ा लो प्रोसेस नहीं होगा तो क्या करेंगे उसका रोड पे ही गिरेगा ना आई थिंक वी हैव टू टेक एग्जांपल फ्रॉम द नेक Which uh, which is uh, going being the same thing for the egg side for the poultry side. You have to take an example yeah. for that. Yeah, yeah. So first thing is actually making things available. Transparency is the most critical factor because if you are not aware what is the milk pricing, the reason for us to choose this topic is also was very critical. How is even milk our our milk is being priced because. we know there are two excesses but even how fat is being discovered how snf is being discovered is also a very critical question so <laughs> again i think like no, sir, we come back again mujhe ek saal lag gaya crack karne ke liye ha perfect <laughs> thank you thank you everyone and i think our our audience would also love it thank you thank you bye 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 thank you thank you very much bye thank you very much bye